Morning, everybody. Hope you're having a Merry Christmas so far. We want to invite you to join us up here as we just begin to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and just in song. So let's just join together. Put our hands together this morning. We're going to sing of his great love. There were walls between us. There were walls between us. By the cross you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Sing it. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Yeah! Your love awakens. Let's feel the darkness shaking. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life. I'm back to life. And hear the song awaken. All creation singing. We're alive. Cause you're alive. You call. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name and then my heart came alive. Here we go. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Yeah. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. What a love. And what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out. We're alive. Cause you're alive. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We'll shout, shout it out, we are not sure and what a love we found that can hold us down. Say it again, we'll shout it out, we are alive, cause sure what a love, what a love we found that can hold us down. We'll shout it out, we are not cause sure a love. Alright, church, let's sing this out. Your love is great. Your love is strong. Let's get our hands together. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens. Sing it again. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Let's go to that bridge again. What a love. Here we go. And what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We'll shout it out. We're alive. Cause sure alive. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We'll shout it out. We're alive. Cause sure alive. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. Shout it out. We're alive, cause you're alive. Let's sing this like we mean it. Your love. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens. Sing it again, just a little louder this time. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love awakens me. 
Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Turn to a neighbor and give him a high five and tell him it's good to see him. What I love about this is you're greeting somebody next to you is today in our Advent calendar, which we've been going through, it's joy. And there is such joy in knowing that there is love that overlooks a multitude of sins, that the love of God came down here at Christmas time in the form of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's just do that course one more time. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens. Let's just marinate in that this morning. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens. So one more time, church. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens. Awakens me. It's good to have you here this morning. If you haven't already, let's say it one more time. Give somebody else a high five and say it's good to see you. Y'all ready to worship Jesus this morning? Worship our King, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Come on, let's sing this together. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? Yeah. It was my tomb Yes Till I met you I was breathing, but not alive. Yes, God. All my failures I tried to hide. Hey. It was my tomb. Hey. Till I met you. Come on. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul. Yes, God, yes. Now your freedom is all that I know. Come on, come on. Hey, the old man who, yeah, Jesus, when I met you, hey, you call my name. And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave yeah. Out of the darkness Into your glorious day We are free indeed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are free indeed by the precious name of Jesus, the one who is slain on that cross, the one who has died on that cross for our sins, the one we are grateful for. So as we sing this bridge, God, let's proclaim that Jesus Christ is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Alpha, our Omega, the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Pality, God. Come on, let's proclaim this. 
I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was a northern. Do you call me a citizen of heaven? When I was broken, you were my healer. Now your love is the air that I breathe. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave, yeah, out of the darkness into your glorious day. Come on, let's sing that bridge one more time. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, till you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the hell I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave, Woo! out of the darkness, into your glorious day, yes God, yes, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day.
that first verse again because the chasm between us and God was great but Jesus came and filled that void here we go how great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to Then through the darkness, then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Yes, Jesus Christ, my living. Who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin and bear my The cross is spoken. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living God. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living. Sing that again, sing it out, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing that again. Then came the morning. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. How of the silence, the roaring lion, declare that great eyes no claim of me. Sing this out, Jesus. Jesus, yours is the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living Let's see that again. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Sing it out, church. Hallelujah. Thank the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Then has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in you. 
your name, Jesus Christ, I live in love. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. voices and hallelujah scripture reading, so I ask you to remain standing with us as Daniel and Sherry Modigan read our scriptures this morning for Advent. Blessing, for the mighty one has done great. 
great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who were proud in thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good yes. things and sent away the rich empty handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy as he has spoken to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing it out. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand this morning. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. My name is Rob, and I'm the lead pastor here. And if you're new here, we love guests. Thank you for being with us in worship. And we love all the rest of you, too, by the way. Thanks for being here with us this morning. Let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you that the hope of glory, those that have professed faith in your Son, that the hope of glory now lives inside of us, God that we are assured that one day you will return, that you've conquered death, you've conquered the grave, but God, the best part is that you are coming back again, and we will live with you, our living hope forever, that we can have hope no matter what the political climate is. We can have hope no matter what our country or this world does. We have hope that the living hope is the righteous ruler and that he will one day reign Amen. Amen. We love you. We thank you for every church in this region. We pray for every pastor, every worship team, every person that's working and serving God to proclaim the gospel. We just ask, God, that two blows love would be loud for you today. We thank you for the living hope in Jesus Christ. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Please be seated this morning. Thank you, worship team, so much. If you are new here today, uh, we love to worship together, our, our younger kids and then our adults together corporately. But this is the time that if you have a child ages 5 through 10 that would love to go to what we call our Kids Celebrate Ministry, um, we have one of our leaders at the back there. They would love to be able to take them back there with them. And they will continue to learn about Jesus. We're so thankful for all those guys working. There's a lot that happens back there. Right? They're keeping your kids safe, and they're teaching them about Jesus more at their level. Uh, the other thing I'll do real quickly before we dive into our teaching time is just go over just a few things with you, and that is this. You should have received a worship guide just like this one right here. Right In this worship guide, there were some sermon notes to follow along today. If you use sermon notes or would like a copy of those or didn't get a copy, we'll have one of our dream teamers or the guys that wear the little blue lanyards like our worship pastor has that says, how can I help you? Right, They're going to get some of those and pass those out if you didn't get a copy. Um, but in the worship guide, there is a part in there that says about a connect card. Right, If you are new here today, there is a connect card behind every seat. 
in that connect card there's a the one on the screen is the older version we have a newer one it's a smaller bluer one either one whatever's in the back of that seat in front of you we would love for you to fill that out don't worry we have what we call a no hassle guarantee here we're not going to bug you bother you we're just simply going to send you either a letter an email or a text saying thank you for being in worship with us and how you can connect with us on a deeper level. But there's also some other things on there. Maybe you are, are wanting to be baptized. Maybe you've surrendered to Christ for the first time. Or maybe you've been far away and God has called you home and you're recommitting your cry, uh, life to Christ. There's a lot of different things on there. We would love for you to check those appropriate boxes. Put it in one of the brown boxes in our cafe area right outside the uh, worship center here on your way out the door. Uh, next steps is the next thing I'll tell you about real quickly. Uh, we are doing Next Steps 3 and Next Steps 4 today. We are doing a special edition of that immediately after worship. So if you've been coming for a while and you go, hey, I, I want to find my fit. I want to start living on purpose. I want to make an impact in my city, at my work, at my school, at my job. You need to be here after Next Steps. We'll have nursery provided for you as well as uh, a luncheon for you as well, okay? Uh, the next thing I'll share with you real quickly is on the left or the right hand side of the celebration news here. And they put a little graphic on the screen here. I read, we read this off pretty much every week, but if you just wanted to come to your phone, get your phone out right now and text the word celebrate to that number and you will automatically be logged in, if you will, or subscribe to our celebration news and you will get important events that are coming up in the life of our faith family, okay? Uh, but anyhow, for today, I'm going to go over them on the right-hand side, and there's three things that I, or two things that I want to make you aware of real quickly. Number one is our Christmas outreach. Hope uh, Wingo, our Kids Celebrate director, wanted me to inform you that today is the last day to receive those gifts. If you do not have gifts and you'd rather give money, you can simply put that in some of the, we have envelopes behind the seats there, or you can do it electronically through our website and just click on their Christmas outreach. We are helping three families have an awesome Christmas this year. And let me, look, look up here real quick, come in close on this one. It's not about the gifts, right? It's just simply being generous because God has been so generous to us. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so don't forget about that. That's right out by the Christmas tree there in front of Kids Celebrate. There are some boxes and a flyer that you can get. But she said that she would take it next week as well because she wants to deliver it to the families personally to be able to do that. And then the last thing I'll share with you is about Serve Sunday, right? Serve Sunday is the 30th of this month. And here's how it's going to work. As many of you know, uh, God has blessed us and opened up a door for us to move into a new storefront property. Uh, which is going to give us double the space, triple the parking, more bathrooms and all of that. Well, here's what we need. We need all of your help on Serve Sunday because guess what? This stuff won't get over there by itself, right? So this is a picture of the new worship center. Uh, it will actually be rearranged by the time we get over there. Can we show another picture just real quickly? This is our new lobby area and welcome center. Uh, there again, it's going to be a little bit changed. Can we go to the next one, guys? This is the outside storefront, right? Uh, minus the ghetto looking no sign there, all right? Uh, we haven't put the sign up yet. And can we go to the next one real quickly? This is the last one, I think. Okay, uh, that's not it, but we'll just move on. Uh, it's pitch black in there. There's no electricity. No, but in all seriousness, listen, this is a blessing from God. And just as we've been good stewards here for the past four years, I want to continue with that same spirit over there, right? And God has opened up a door already. God has really given us the additional seating that we need. Praise God for that blessing. It's actually there on site. Yeah, you can give God a hand for that. That's a blessing, all right? So all those chairs are sitting over there waiting on for you, all you hand clappers to say, come put me together, right? Uh, they're over there, but uh, we'll be announcing some other serve days between now and then. But this is the one that we really need you here on, okay? Is we'll have fellowship, we'll provide lunch after service on that Sunday. And if we can get about 30 of us to take all these chairs and all this stuff down and take it over there, we want to launch the brand new year in our new building, all right? And listen, I believe that this is just the beginning. That God is going to save more sinners. That God is going to heal more brokenhearted. Right? I was telling some people last night at Celebration Church, we don't believe in worshiping with our kind because we're all born again or we're all sinners in need of being born again. Amen? We're all desperate in grace. And I want Celebration Church to look like heaven, don't you? That every tribe, every tongue, every people group, and every nation proclaiming the glories of the one who is worth all of the praise and all the honor. Amen? 
Don't you want to join in with heaven and do that? That you are our living hope. That you deserve all the glory and all the honor. Right? That's what the angels were proclaiming. His excellency. Glory be to the one. Amen. So that's what we want to do. So we need all of your help on that Surf Sunday. Please plan to be here with us. We'll also have nursery provided for those that need nursery as well. Uh, we would love for you to join us. So let me pray once again for our teaching time, and then we're going to dive right in. Father, we love you today, and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, that we have hope today. And it's not a wishful hope. It's not a maybe hope. But it's a full assurance, not because of anything that we have done, but because it's based on everything that you are. You're perfect. You're holy. You're righteous. Your word says you're a man that shall never lie. So our hope is in that. No matter what the storms look like today, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what family has declared over us, no matter what Fox News or fake news or MSNBC News says, let us hear the news of heaven today. That you are in control, sovereign king. And our hope is in you. Will you say amen with me today? Amen, amen. So we're in part three. Thank you, BJ. And we are in part three of a sermon series entitled Hark. And this is the final week, and we have been in this sermon series, and I get asked all the time, you know, why did you want to name it Hark? Well, probably just to annoy some of you that, or whatever, or you maybe have to go Google it or whatever the case may be. But just to kind of let the cat out of the bag, Hark just simply means to pay close attention to or to listen, right? And that's what we're seeing in Advent is that in Advent, we're in this anticipation and this longing. Now, the early church was waiting for the birth of Christ, Right? If you are born again today, you're a Christian, you're longing for his returning. And so we are to lay a, pay close attention to or to listen to the real message of Christmas. And despite what our culture says, that it's about stuff and getting things, and there's nothing wrong with that. I want to be very clear. There's nothing wrong with getting presents. How many people like to get presents? Raise your hand. You don't have to be overly spiritual in the house. You don't, right? We don't do that here. Right? We all like presents. Even no matter how old you get, you still kind of get up with that adrenaline rush, and you still want to see what's under the tree unless it's that same tie or that dishware or pair of socks that you've gotten four years in a row from that same relative who doesn't understand that you still have the other three something that they've given you the previous three years, right? But it's still exciting to get up. But here's the thing that I want us to see. We should be like that every day because we've heard the greatest news, and that is that a Messiah has come, that we could not rescue ourselves, but God made a way for us to have hope today. Right? When we were dead in our depravity, lost in our sin, when we weren't even going after God, God so loved the world that he stepped in and made a way. Right? And this is the message the angel is proclaiming. This is the message that all the heavenly hosts are declaring. Right? That salvation has come. So Hark the Herald Angels Sing was a song written by Charles Wesley. I won't get into all the background again. You can go back and watch our sermons on YouTube or, or our website or on our Facebook fan page. But he was the brother who's famously known for the founder of Methodism by the name of John Wesley. And Charles Wesley is one of the most prolific hymn writers that has ever been right in our history. And so he wrote this song based on Luke chapter 2, which we'll be in in just a second. But you may be saying, well, Rob, okay, I get you. But what if I'm not a Christian today? What does this really mean for me? Well, I want you to listen and pay close attention to this. That God has a purpose and a plan for you. And that no matter if you think you've blown it, no matter if you think, hey, I don't got my act together. 2,000 years ago, there was a declaration that came forth that salvation is here. That there's one who will put your act together for you. Who's one that no matter if you feel like, hey, I'm just, I'm just used parts. He says, no, no, no. I want you to be born again. Aren't you glad that God doesn't do the Chip and Joanna Gaines thing? I like Chip and Joanna Gaines. My wife watches that show pretty religiously. right? But at the end, you ever seen the end of the show? 
they're in front of the house and they have the, the little the big picture frames together. It's called the big reveal, if I remember correctly. I, I'll be honest with you, babe, I don't really watch it that much but with her, but I do try to watch a little bit of it, okay? And so at the end, you know, they have the family out and they're all they're all like, <laughs> you know, can't wait. And it's it's the picture of the old house, you know what I'm talking about? And then they do the big reveal. And they open it up. Here's the difference between Chip and Joanna Gaines and Jesus. That's just a remodel. Jesus says in 2 Corinthians 5 that you are brand new. See the difference? So there's a big reveal moment maybe for some people today that goes, no, 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 no. This is who I once was. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amen? So that's what I want you to hopefully see. And as a believer, I want you to be reminded of this because how many people know there's commercials, there's stuff on our smartphones, on Facebook. We're getting bombarded with stuff, stuff, get more stuff. It's all about stuff. You have to have the latest stuff, 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 stuff. And it's easy to become callous to the true meaning is that the greatest gift has already come. The greatest gift that we could ever offer you as a church and as a faith family, the greatest gift that you could ever offer your neighbor, your coworker, your family member, a friend, an acquaintance, a complete stranger at the gas pump is the gift of Jesus Christ. You see? And so we, on Sunday mornings, love to do what the angel and the heavenly host were doing, and that is proclaiming his glory, that he is glorious and that he is wonderful. Okay, and so here's what we're going to do real quickly. I'm going to read verse three, just like I've been. And just full disclosure here, this is not the original version that Charles Wesley has written. Right. It's gone through several revisions, but we're just going to go with this one for this sermon series. And we'll read it real quickly. They're going to put it on the screen for us as well. Is this that hail the heaven born prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Light in life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Man, that's for someone today who needs some healing today. Amen. Risen, right, in, risen with healing in his wings, mild he lays his glory by. Born that, no, that man no more may die. I love that part. Born to raise the son of earth. Born to give them a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. I find it interesting that this all-powerful and all-knowing and omnipresent, meaning that he's everywhere God, would go to great extremes so that we would have an opportunity to put our trust in that gift. This is what I need you to see, that God is the one doing all the action here. It's in his initiating love that he leans into our story. Right? And he makes a way for us real quickly herald just simply means an official messenger i want to read it to you an official messenger someone about to announce some important news there there is no more important news than that we were lost we could not help ourselves paul this guy named paul if you didn't grow up in the bible writes in romans chapter 3 that none of us were good that none of us were doing good that none of us went after god and he's requoting from the prophet Isaiah. And here's, what, here's, here's the good news, that even when we were running and chasing and settling for so many false little G-gods, the big G-god was pursuing us so that we would have an opportunity to hear this message. You see? It says this, an official messenger, someone about to announce some important news, Right? And what were the angels announcing? They were announcing that the long-awaited pr- Messiah was finally here. Right? For hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, this had been prophesied that God would make a way. But you know what I love about God? Here's what I love about God. And if you've been around the block a few times in Christianity, have you ever noticed how God really never does it the way that you think he should do it? That's what I love about God. Now, sometimes I don't love that because I get a little angry and a little frustrated. Uh, I, I'm not religious, so I can be real from the pulpit. I'm just really real about it. You look real spiritual out there, so I don't think any of you ever deal with that. But uh, you ever had that where you're just like, boy, God, I wish you would just. And then you look back, and what's the old saying, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you look back and you go, oh, I see. Right? I see God now. Okay. And so we're going to be in Luke chapter 2. I'm not going to read all the verses like we've been doing, 
Uh, like I said, you can go back. Can we fast forward to verse 18, guys, if you'll get us to four, verse 18? And I'll just give you uh, some cliff notes here, and then you guys can go back and read it. I'll let the guys on the media shut. I forgot to let them. Okay, thank you. They're, they're quick. I forgot to let them know that before service. Um, but here's the thing, right? G, there's this census or this registration, depends what version of, of Scripture you have this morning, that is happening. And Joseph and Mary are having to go back to their hometown, right, of Bethlehem. And I'm not going to get into all about the inn and the manger and all that again. Once again, you can go back and recap that on our website or on our Facebook fan page. But I'd like to challenge people to really go read this stuff because a lot of times the depictions that we get is what I call the Hollywood Jesus, right? But the reality is I do want to show you one picture. Can I put you guys on the spot in the back? Can we go to that manger picture real quickly? Is it, do we still have that in there? Okay, so I know we have this, and it's lovely, and it's nice, and it's cute. You want to get the little, the, the little blanket out of there and wrap yourself up real nice and neat and all that. But the reality is Jesus, scholars believe that Jesus was actually born in this. This was nothing more than an animal feeding trough. Okay? Now, my wife's a germaphobe, so if God said you're going to have a baby in this, my wife would have to have a lot of faith for that to happen. Right, right, babe? Because she has a, a hand gel in every door and every part of the house. And uh, we even got a super soaker gel gun, I think, somewhere. We can soak <laughs> ourselves down and be clean, right? But I want you to think about this back then, 2,000 years ago, if you will, that there wasn't what we have today, right? And the Holy Spirit supernaturally moved on Mary for her to supernaturally conceive this baby. But a lot of times in the depictions that we see is that Jesus went down to the Motel 6. And, and I mean, uh, Joseph and Mary went to the Motel 6 and the innkeeper didn't have any rooms for them. And that's really not a true, accurate depiction. Here's why I say this. Because we've never been a church that believes in drinking the Kool-Aid unless Jesus is pouring it. Right? Go study the Bible. Go open up scripture and read it for yourself. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Because the enemy knows that as long as you keep being what I call spoon-fed in the high chair spiritually, you'll never live the victorious life that he has for you. Okay, let me say it another way. I'm a pastor of this church, but I'm a man. And I'm, fa I'm fallible, right? Jesus is perfect. So my job is to lead you to the one who will never fail you, right? You understand what I'm saying? Go read the Bible. Open it up and study the Bible for yourself, okay? We're going to do our job. We're going to do our best to feed you every Sunday morning. But we want you to dive into the scripture and let it become alive and let the Holy Spirit illuminate it to your spirit. And I guarantee you, if you will do that for 90 days straight, you'll walk in more victory than you've ever walked in your whole life. You want to know why? Because now the enemy can't fool you. right? He can't trick you and tell you lies that are not in the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're going to learn the whole Bible in 90 days. But the bottom line is to store it in your spirit. Right, stored in your spirit. All right, let's get back on track. Let's shoot that rabbit. Where'd it go? Somebody shoot it. It's right back there. Shoot it real quickly. Back there. All right? So these angels are proclaiming this message, and we're going to start in verse 18, that they go back to their hometown. Right? But here's what I find interesting about this, that God gives this important news. Now, if, 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 if this was this important, wouldn't some of us be calling all the news outlets? Right, we'd want the most important of the important to be there. We'd want fake news. We want MSNB news. I'm just teasing some of you. You guys get a little, you guys get a little high strung about stuff like that, right? We would want all the, We'd want Matt Lompon out here talking about it's impressive out here, right? It's impressive. I love that he says that so much. It's impressive. The storm is impressive, right? We'd want whoever we could have out here covering this story. But here's the thing about God: is God's ways are different than ours, and He goes to the insignificant of the culture. See, that's good news for some of us who feel like I'm very insignificant today. Here's the good news. 2,000 years ago, God gave the most important news to the insignificant of the Jewish culture. The shepherds, right? Those that were not considered much. Actually, some commentary says that they were considered unclean or outcast. They weren't the popular, right? Isn't that good news that we're all candidates for the glory of God? Amen? Amen. Right? No matter how insignificant you may feel today, I like to say it this way, and this is not my saying, but I just thought I would bring it up, that God doesn't call and use the qualified, but rather qualifies the called. See? 
Isn't that amazing? That God can use us no matter what we feel like. So let's read in verse 18 real quickly. Can we pull it up? And all who were amazed at what the shepherds said to them, can we go on? But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. This is the last one here, and then I'll give you a little bit. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, for which were they were just as they had been told. Right. It had been prophesied 700 years prior that Jesus would be coming. Right. God goes to the insignificant, gives them this news. The Bible says that they were terrified. How many people know if an angel showed up at your house in the middle of the night, you'd probably be a little scared too, wouldn't you? But I love that they were amazed, right? They were amazed by the news that was told to the shepherds. And they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. Aren't you glad that God never lies? See, some of us may have been prophesied some things if you believe in that today. Maybe you don't. I know we have a non-denominational church, and some people get a little bit scared about stuff like that. But maybe something's been prophesied to your life, and you haven't seen the come fruition yet. And God wants to remind you today that he's not on your time schedule. He's going to come back. You know what I mean? He's gonna, that's why I'm very careful to say, well, he's going to come back in this time. That's not what the scripture says. Amen. We're just going to leave that God's business. Right? But I love this. They had seen and heard, which was just as they had been told. See? God was doing something miraculous here that the Messiah was coming. Let me give you three truths today that I want to go through, and we'll break down in just a second. Like I said, I'm not going to read everything because we've rehashed it and rehashed it over the past few weeks. You can go back and read it on your own. But here's what I want you to see. The past three weeks, what we've been doing is taking three truths out of these verses. And we have been uh, just spending a few minutes on them talking about some, some, some things. And so the, the first one that I want you to see today in verse 1 here, which this song was based on this particular chapter, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, was based on Luke chapter 2. What I want us to see here, that it, it says this right here, and I'm going to read it to you in, in the, uh, the verse. It says, Hail of heaven, hail the heaven born, prince of peace. So truth number one there is the good news is that they were coming to proclaim that Jesus was our perfect peace. Okay? Our perfect peace. That Jesus was our perfect peace. He is perfect peace. He's not a version of peace. He is the only perfect peace. Amen, Rob. That was really good. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Now, the reality is, how many people know that we've been guilty of settling for artificial versions of peace? Okay, we'll talk about that in just a second. But look what I, the prophet Isaiah prophesied 700 years prior. Look what happens here in Isaiah 9 through 6. This is what we call the Old Testament if you didn't grow up in church today. Uh, for, us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and what? Prince of Peace. Romans 5.1, this guy named the Apostle Paul who wrote much of the New Testament, he has this radical conversion, and he says this, Therefore, since we have been justified, all that simply means is that we've been made right. And the little brackets there, I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. It says, that is, acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God. And how is that done? By faith, right? We have what? Peace with God. That is the joy of reconciliation with him, excuse me, though our Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Prophesied peace was coming. Perfect peace came. Perfect peace died on the cross. Perfect peace rose again. And the Apostle Paul, as we know him, says, hey, the best peace that you could ever experience. Listen, I want you to understand because when we think of peace, here's what we think of. When we buy that new big screen, it makes us happy. You ever had those kind of experiences where, where you, know, you know what I'm talking about? You ever had those experiences where the, the day was going rough? But if you could just buy something, right? 
you know. For men, it's probably a TV or a fishing pole or a gun or, you know, whatever, right? Go, go, go do 18 holes on the golf course, and that brings us peace. For some of you women, maybe it's, you know, I don't know, going to bed in Bath and Water Works or getting some candles or shopping, getting a big old, I don't even know the words of Starbucks, so I'm not going to try. The, the big one, the big Starbucks with all the cream and everything, caramel, and it's so delicious, Right? Right? But that's what we think a lot of times is peace. Is we, 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 what we do is we confuse it and we distort it with just temporal and secular things. But what, what, what they're really declaring here is there really is no peace unless there's peace vertically first. You understand that? That's, that's what they're saying here is that you will never have peace no matter how much artificial peace you consume through a relationship, through substance, through success, through money, career, whatever the little artificial little peace gods are, you'll never have true peace until this is reconciled first. And the only way that this relationship is reconciled is through the perfect peace, and his name is Jesus Christ. You understand that? Because how many of us have ever really had where life was really good, but there was still something missing? You ever had those moments in your life that life was really good, but you knew that something was missing? I'm not saying you can't have temporary peace without God. I'm not saying you can't have moments of peace in your life without God. What I am saying, though, is that you'll never be at full peace until this relationship is reconciled. You see? And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here, is that I've been made right. The gavel has went down in God's court of law, and he has declared in all of the heavens and earth that Rob Sevilla has been made right in this court because of perfect peace. So it doesn't matter what you say about me anymore. It doesn't matter about what people in my past said about me. It doesn't even matter what the old church said about me that I grew up in and I made all those mistakes in because when I professed faith in Christ, all of heaven agreed with God the Father when he said righteous. And some of you have not grasped that. It's a doctrine called the just doctrine of justification by faith. That I am fully assured that no matter what anybody else says, that he's the one that holds the gavel, that his word matters, his word is irreversible, and he has said that I am righteous in his sight because of the blood of the Lamb. You see? That should bring you peace at night. Right? That should make you a peace dealer. If you want to be a dealer, be a peace dealer. Because you have perfect peace living inside of you. You understand that? He is the Prince of Peace. That's good news. Now, here's what I love. Once again, I got to I got to make sure I say this, that who's the one that initiated the peace offering? God. Not you. God. And here's the ama here's how scandalous this story is, is that God didn't need to make peace with anyone. Because he's perfect and in need of any nothing. But in his infinite mercy and grace and love. He initiates this peace offering. Amen. He makes peace with man. In other words, that we now can have spiritual harmony, right, brought about through the restoration that is found in Christ Jesus. Don't you love that? I want to share this story with you real quickly, and I wrote it in my notes so I wouldn't forget it, but I don't, I'm a little... I'm 44 years old, so I was, I think, probably seven or eight when this happened. And some of you younger bucks could just have to kind of Google it later or watch some YouTube videos or whatever you do, right? But there was this, uh, this happened in 19, let me make sure I get it right, 1985, April the 23rd, 1985. Some of you may remember this, that Coke launched a brand new formula, right? This, this, this formula was going to revolutionize the Coke Wars, Right, Pepsi and Coke are right there. By the way, I'm more of a Pepsi guy, but that's okay. We, that's a discussion for later day, right? But, um, right, so they, they, these Pepsi and Coke are right there. Well, they were the cola, or cola Wars is what they called it. And so Coke comes up with this idea that they're going to change this 100-year-old formula to Coke. It's going to be better than the old Coke. It's the new Coke, right? Well, here's the thing. I'm going to read this to you. Coke launches a new formula, and it was disastrous, exclamation point. 
A poll showed that only 13% of soda drinkers liked the new Coke. It was so bad that when a new product launch is a disaster, it is called the new Coke of its industry. Now, let's pause for a minute. You know it's bad when your failure is now coined for other epic failures in, in whatever industry you may be in, right? It's called the new Coke of the industry. Coca-Cola company announced a change to its nearly century-old secret formula. The new Coke would have a smoother, sweeter taste, similar to Diet Coke, but sweetened with corn syrup, right? Market researchers and pollsters were sure it would be a hit. Now, you say, Rob, what does that have to do with my spiritual life? This, uh, here's why. Because some of us are settling for the wrong peace formula. And we think the formula for peace is found in so many other things. Now, here's the other thing. I want you to wake up today and hear this because the Holy Spirit is telling you this right now. Is that some of you are so used to drinking it artificially that you don't even know the real thing. Because your taste buds spiritually have become acclimated to the artificial. And the Holy Spirit wants me to remind you today that he is the original formula for peace. There's no artificials, right? Matt, Matt loves that, right? There's nothing that's going to give you headaches. I'm just saying that because I used to drink diet drink, okay? But listen to me. Listen to me. Quit consuming the wrong formula for peace. And Jesus is asking you today to return to him who is perfect peace. Amen? Number two, the good news is not only do we have perfect peace found in Jesus, but number two is, because I wanted to alliterate again today for the third week in a row and be a cool preacher, I'll use the word perpetual life for all you Christian folks that speak Christianese, eternal life. You're like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Right? Perpetual life, eternal life, simply means this, that it's a life that never ends. Right? So the good news of what they're proclaiming, the important news involved, that not only do we have a chance to have perfect peace, right? because our relationship with God can be restored, but the second thing is that we will live for eternity with him. So let me, let me say this. this. This thing gets more scandalous by the minute. Perfect peace lives inside of me, but when he returns, I'm going to go live with perfect peace for eternity. Do you know that the Bible says he has so much glory that there will be no need of any external light source? I don't know how that works, but that's pretty stinking cool to me. I mean, if you got that much glory, you're a boss, in my opinion, right? That you have that much glory. But if he has that much glory, he has that much peace. And here's the cool thing, that your mess and your circumstance and your storm, your valley, whatever. Your, it's like we use all these uh, natural element things now. Your hurricane, you know, all these things. God has enough peace for all of your storms in the whole world and then some. He never runs out of peace. Here's the other thing. He's still in the saving business as well. Do you know he wants to save people in this city? Do you know he wants to save people in your family? Do you know that he wants to save people at your job and your workplace? And he wants to use you to do it. You know how he wants you to use that? Because you're going to walk in on Monday morning with perfect peace all over you. I mean, you don't walk in like, you know, swag or nothing like that, right? But you got, per I mean, you're like, yeah, I'm a perfect peace, man. What's up, everybody? I got perfect peace on me, right? That's not what I'm saying. But you walk into your workplace and people go, there's something different about him or her. Because when Fox News or whatever news or whatever news outlet is saying this and the whole world is going to you know what in a handbasket, right? This person has peace and has hope because they know that the sovereign king is in control. You see? Perfect peace. Eternal life. Here's the other thing that I want you to see, and we'll read these scriptures real quickly, is this. Is the reason that I can have peace today is because this is not my eternal home. 
There was an old song that we used to sing, I'm just a passing through. That's how they sang it back in the church I grew up. If heaven's not my home, oh, Lord, what will I do? You, you kind of had to get a little, rock, and the drummers, are they're going, right? Nothing wrong with that. That song is, is singing a true statement, right? But here's the thing. It's true, right? This is not true my home friend if you are a believer today you can have hope and peace knowing that no matter what happens here that one day you're going to be with him for eternity and he will rule righteously and justly forever and ever there will be no pain no sorrow everybody will be healed there will be no cancer there will be no this no that because everything will be made new for the glory of God you can have peace and hope today Right? You can have perpetual life in Christ today. And you say, well, Rob, how does that happen? Oh, you got to wait to the end of service. No, I'm just kidding. You don't. You want to know how big God is? He can save you right now in your seat. Here's how, here's how it happens. I'm tired of being my own king. I'm sorry, God, for what I've made of this life. I'm sorry for going against your commands and your ways. And you know what I love about God? He doesn't get with the, the triune God doesn't get together and go, well, I think he's probably going to need 15 steps to get back to us. But rather, his arms were wide open 2,000 years ago. And they're still wide open today. Ready to receive you just as you are. Amen. But the glorious news of the gospel is by his grace, he will not leave you the same way. Let's look at John 3, 16 and 17, because I don't think we know it in this culture. Um, For God so loved the world, I, I highlighted so. Maybe you should put a pen, a circle, some arrows, some emojis, whatever you want to put there. For God so loved the world. Do you know what so means? It means to such a great extent. God so loved the world. Right, that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but what have eternal life. Here's the part that nobody ever reads on to, verse 17. Let's this I, I think this is just as glorious too. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but what to save the world through him. See, some of you are far away from God today because you think God has this zapper gun that he just wants to take you out. And the reality is that he so loved the world, he went to great extent to make a peace offering to man in order that you would have eternal life, that you would be born again. Isn't that awesome? Well, what did he save us from? Well, the next scripture tells us in, in Romans 6, 23. By the way, if you haven't figured out if we love Romans, we really love Romans, or I do. I love Romans around here, right? I could read Romans over and over and over again. For the wages of sin is death. But the what? Free gift of God. Now, let me be very careful here. Salvation in the gospel is free, but it came at a great, great price. Right? So we're not talking about cheap grace here. We're talking about costly grace. But the free gift of God is eternal life or perpetual life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I highlighted the word in. That, that needs to be underlined and highlighted because it's in Christ that we're that way. In other words, if we're not in Christ, then the wages that the world, that sin pays is, yes, physical death. But in this context here, we're speaking more of spiritual death. Okay? Spiritual death is what we're talking about. And I know it's not popular in this culture to talk about hell, but it's in the Bible. God wrote it. We're going to talk about it, right? So here's the thing. What he's saying here is that if you're not in Christ, that there is a real hell that real people will go to. Right? Okay? That's the truth. We love you enough to tell you the truth around here. Okay? The wages of Jesus is eternal life is peace, right, is joy. Keep going on and on. The wages of sin, Paul is saying here that we're working for one or the other, okay? But the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus, 
right? So the good news is perfect peace, that a baby has come to bring us that perfect peace, that harmony with God, right? The other good news, the other part of that is that now we can live eternally with God in Christ Jesus. The third thing that I want to give you is this, and I want to camp out here just for a few minutes, and that is promised healing, okay? Promised healing. Now, healing is one of those trigger words that will trigger people a different whenever you talk about healing in whatever church that you may be in. Full disclosure, if you're new here today, I grew up in a full-blown charismatic church. We ran around the building, did backflips off the stage and all that kind of stuff, and uh, we, we had healing services and prophesied services for six hours. Uh, listen, I have no problem with that. If that's what you do, hey, praise God. As long as it's bringing Christ glory, I'm okay. If it's bringing you glory, I'm not okay with it, okay? But if it's bringing Christ glory, I'm okay with it, okay? I'm, I'm never going to tell you what you can or cannot do. But what I want you to see here is this is one of those uh, taboo subjects or can be or controversial subjects because what happens when you talk about healing is this. Let me put it this way. Do you know that you could be physically healed or externally healed on the outside, but be very spiritually broken on the inside? Right? But the culture I grew up in really likes to focus on external. Because that's what we do in this culture, right? You come in here, hey, brother, praise God. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Right? And then you walk out, and you're like, We focus on external. Am I right? It's true. You could be physically healed and be okay and have all of your limbs and everything going good for you, but be totally lost and spiritually broken far away from God. See? Here's why I'm telling you this. Because your greatest need of healing is not physical healing. Hey, praise God, I still believe God does that, and we'll lay hands on you today if you want to. We believe in healing around Celebration Church. Right? We believe God still heals because he's the same. But here's the thing. My, more, my, my most important objective for you is not physical healing, but is spiritual healing. What I want to see you come out of is darkness into light and all of that brokenness, hurt, shame, condemnation, everything be healed through the blood of Jesus. You see? Does that make sense? I know some of you are bucking that because I can feel it. I, I get it. I understand. Listen, you would have talked to me like this 15 years ago. You would have got jack slapped in the spirit because I was so focused on healing and healing and healing and healing. And there again, we believe in that. And I pray healing over every single one of you right now. I pray that. And I declare that over you. But here's what I pray for you more is not just for physical healing, but for spiritual healing. Because a lot of times the sickness externally leads back to the spiritual brokenness and the hurt and the pain and the suffering. The scars that are still there from things that have happened to some of you. But I love it that his stains, his blood stains deeper than those scar stains. The stains, the residue from the past. Drenched in the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is what I want you to see today, right? We'll stay here for four hours and lay hands on people if you want. But I don't want to do it if you leave out of here and don't know Jesus. You see, that's our greatest objective is we celebrate in such a way that you would see the glorious grace of God in our lives. That you would see that this person right here deserves hell. I deserve hell. I did nothing to warrant what he did for me 20 years ago. Nothing. And I'm dependent on that grace every second of the day. That's why we celebrate here. That's why we proclaim the good news here. Right? Because the only hope that we have is in Jesus. That's the only thing I can offer you this morning. Look at the way the Apostle Peter says this. And by the way, he's talking about Jesus revealing himself to the insignificant. You see this, that Peter was a roughneck, if you will, right? He was a roughneck. He was a blue-collared roughneck. Look what he writes after God has changed his life. Look what he says. He bore our sins in his body on a tree so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. See, genuine salvation, when you're born again, there is a change, right? There is a change that says we're dead to those things of the past and now we're living for righteousness' sake. By his wounds you have 
been healed, right? By his stripes, some version says, you have been healed. And Peter is referencing, you can make a note there in Isaiah 53, 5 and 6, right? He's referencing that from the Old Testament. But here's what I want you to see. In the context of this scripture, Peter's writing about servants that have been done wrongly by their masters. Go read, it's right above it. I don't, I don't have it in the notes. And he's talking about that we can bear all this suffering. We can bear all this injustice. See, the problem with many Christians today is we listen to too much Facebook or social media or the news. And then we forget about scriptures that are right above this that says the reason that we can deal with injustice, the reason that we can deal with suffering, the reason that we can bear all these things because he has borne our sins on his body. Go read it. Don't, don't take my word for it. Go read it. But some of us are so quick to be triggered and then the very thing that we hate, we become the hate as well. You don't get a lot of amens on that. I know that because it's like, you don't know, you know, you don't know anything. Yeah, I do. Because I refuse, I refuse to be part of the problem. This is the solution that you can go and endure anything, not because you have all the power, not because you listened to 10 Tony Robbins tapes before you came in here today, not because Zig Ziglar got rid of your stinking thinking, not, you know, not because Dr. Phil, you had a really good episode and you cried a lot and he got a lot of demons out of you through that one hour episode. Those are all good things. I'm not saying those are bad things. What I'm saying is that you can endure the greatest injustices to you. You can endure the greatest suffering because he has endured it all. And the Prince of Peace lives inside of you if you are born again. Time out. I'm not making light of injustices today. I'm not making light of people that are, I don't know if you can say stupid from the pulpit, but I'll just say it, stupid people. Well, excuse me, let me be more proper. Ignorant people. Okay? But here's the thing. You want to change ignorant people? Be a dealer of peace. Be a dealer of hope. You see the good news here? Instead of, I'm going to let them know something. Right, that's how some of you type. You're like, you can't wait. Yeah, it's hard. Right? Have you ever typed out a whole message and the Holy Spirit says, don't do it? I'm just, I'm just real enough to admit it to you. I'm like, that brother, sister, stone, so. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I, I command a thousand curses on your soul. You know, that kind of thing. You want to bring back those Egyptian plagues on them? You know what I'm talking about? That's how some of you are, man. Your faces are so intense on that stuff. And you got all the mean emoji cons, too. You're like the mean ones, the red face, and the, you know, the, the 100 at the end. Right. But do you know why that you can bear this? And here, I got a point to this here. You want to know why you can bear this? Let me put it to you this way. Do you know why you can bear that even if you feel like God should heal you, but he doesn't? You can bear it today because he has bore it all. We don't like to talk that way, do we? But do you know how many people I run into and go, I don't know why God healed me. And you know what they're told a lot of times? And this makes me so mad. I want to ninja kick people in the spirit when I hear this. Well, you didn't have enough faith. See, we want to blame folks, don't we? Let me share a story with you real quick. I wasn't going to share it, but I'm going to share it. I'm, I'm out of time. Let me share a story with you, and then I want to give you two things. We're done. And I've shared this before, but I want to share it with you, and I'm very careful because my wife is here, and it, it happened to both of us. But my wife and I lost a son several years ago, and I'm just radical and crazy enough to believe God that he heals because he does. I've seen it with my own eyes, right? He still does. And so I remember having some friends of mine in the hospital. It was a very traumatic day, and my spiritual mom was there with me. Her name is Betty Love, and my good tall friend Dale, who's not here with us today, he's, he was with us, and then uh, I, I call him my best friend. He may not feel the same, but Matt Mackey, who's our associate pastor, uh, was with me, and, and we just began, and I'm just going to say it, okay? I don't have to say it in way, so if you get offended, don't come back. But we just started praying in the spirit. Didn't we? Matt's back there. We started praying in the spirit. Okay? I'll just leave it at that because some of you can't handle it more than that. Okay? Just pray in the spirit. And we believed that God was going to raise my son. I was like, God, if you'll just raise him from the dead, man, I'll do this. Have you ever done that? I'll do this and this and that and this and that. 
well, God didn't raise my son. And it's in those moments that you really have to practice what you preach. It's easy to get up here and go, oh, let's, let's make a whole bunch of stuff rhyme and be cute and all this kind of stuff. But something like that happens to you. The only person that you have left is the Prince of Peace to hold on to. The only hope that you have is the living hope who lives inside of you. When you've cried and you've begged and you've begged and you've cried, these are real things that happen. Right? I don't believe in doing all the shiny Christianity stuff. I'm talking about real things that happen. You realize that the only thing that you have to cling to is him. But here's what God taught me in that. And listen, this is for someone today. This is for someone today, okay? This is what God taught me. Is this. Is that through that, through that suffering, and through that pain, through that traumatic experience, God used it for my good. See, we like that scripture until we add that other element into it, don't we? We like it when we get the job promotion. Well, God think, work, works all things for our good. Right? We like it when we get the job promotion. We like it when we get blessed with some money in the mail. Well, God works all things for good. But when you lose a son, you don't want to quote that scripture, do you? Until you're real that his version of good is the ultimate good and that you and I will never fully understand that. But if he is sovereign and righteous and holy and knows all, then I have no choice but to have hope and faith that he knows everything. And that through that, he used it to bring me closer to him, that he put a deeper, a greater fire in my spirit to want to win more people for Jesus. That if they experience this type of hurt, this type of pain, that I could say, hey, I've been there. My wife can say, I've been there, but let me tell you about the one who can comfort you. Because I guarantee you the medications only work for so long. I guarantee you the new boyfriend or the new baby boo bae, he only works for so long or she only works for so long. I can guarantee you that the substance and the vices only work for so long. But the original formula for peace always works. Always works. Amen. Does that make sense? Real quickly, Romans 8, 28, I'll just read it to you. I know I, we have it on the screen. We know all things work together, right, for the good of those who love. I highlighted love. This is not a generic, feel-good, motivational statement. Those who love God, those who are in Christ, those who have surrendered to him and said, I make you king and Lord of my life. And then whether you make him or not, he's still Lord, okay? Who are called according to his purpose. Here's the thing. I'm going to read this quote here as we close by Matthew Henry. Can we go to the Matthew Henry? There it is right there. I don't want to miss this. I think this is so beautiful. It says, come and see the vict victories of the cross. Christ's wounds are thy healings. His agonies thy repose. His conflicts thy conquest, his groans, thy songs, his pains, thy ease, his shame, thy glory, his death, thy life, his sufferings, thy salvation. You can endure today because he has been through it all. I love that. His sufferings are salvation. His pain our songs glory to god in the highest right glory to the newborn king to his excellency to his majesty be glory and honor forever and ever amen friends this is the good news of the gospel that people need to hear in this christmas season that the greatest gift has come down so I want to offer that to you today if you don't know him. I want to offer that to you today if you're far away. I want to offer you a fresh visit into the Prince of Peace. 
Maybe you're hurting, right? The holidays stink for a lot of people. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've did some things. Maybe whatever's going on in your life, I'm telling you there's enough peace to go around. And so I'm going to ask you today to receive that peace, whether it's for the first time. You say, well, Rob, how does that happen? Oh, I can't give you the words to say, but here's what I can tell you is that it starts with just waving the white flag of surrender. Saying, I'm tired of settling for other artificial versions of peace. God, would you let me taste of this peace that Rob has talked about today? If that's you, right in your seat, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, bow your head. If that's you right now, or if you're watching us online today, if you're at home or wherever you may be watching us at work, if that's you right there, God is big enough to reach through the internet. If that's you right now, would you cry out to him and would you say, that's me, Rob, I'm, I'm ready to surrender to peace. We're not going to come up to your seat or anything, just right in your seat, you cry out to him and say, God, I need you today. I repent, God. And the Bible says that if we will confess, genuinely confess, and believe in our hearts that we will be saved. So salvation for the first time, maybe for you today, or for the believer today, I can feel it in this room that there's some people that are really hurting, that this is a tough time for you. I just ask that the Prince of Peace right now would cover you. Come on. Ask him to baptize you afresh in his peace. As they lead us in this song, just let's stay in this moment. My heart is overwhelmed And I cannot hear your voice I'll hold on to what is true Though I cannot see If the storms of life they come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in faith I will believe I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your son Come on. This morning, surrender to it Cause love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free I'm yours I am forever yours let him rescue you today. Come on. Mountain high or valley low, I'll sing out, remind my soul that I'm yours. I am forever Come on, cry out to him today. If that's you, cry out to him. Because love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I'm yours, I am forever yours, mountain high or valley low, I'll sing out, remind my soul that I'm yours, I am forever yours, I'm yours. Come on, sing it out. I am yours Cause I am yours I am yours All my days Jesus I am yours Amen Amen Listen as we get ready to close today Isn't that a great reminder? For those that are believers, but if you're not a believer today, you can leave here declaring that same song that I am his. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. As we close today, and this is our final act of worship, is we like to give going out the door. They're going to put a graphic on the screen that gives you four ways to do that. Um, simply put it in the brown boxes there in the cafe area on your way out the door. Um, it's also a place to remind you about your connection cards. If you don't mind filling those out, if you're new here, we would love to send you a little something to tell you a little bit more about us and how you can connect with us on a deeper level. And then we also, if you're new here, we have a guest, a, a gift for you. If you're new, a guest, excuse me, I can't talk this morning, a gift for you if you're new here this morning. 
Um, all you have to simply do is stop right by the Christmas tree there. There's a place called Guest Services. We would love to get you that gift and just say thank you for being in worship with us today and just bless you. So I'm going to pray for our time of offering. Right, I'm going to remind you about next steps. If you want to stay immediately after, we're doing steps three and four. Just stay and we'll get you set up. But let's pray on our way out. Father, we love you and we thank you for Jesus. God, I thank you that we're yours. And I thank you, God, that your decision cannot be reversed. I thank you, God, that you have declared that we're yours through our faith in Christ. Father, here's what I pray that you saved sinners today. Here's what I pray, God, that you set the broken, excuse me, the, the, the captives free. God, I pray that you have liberated those that were in chains. I pray, God, that you have healed the brokenhearted for your glory. And I pray that you would continue to use us and use these funds that we pour into your kingdom in such a way that you would get all the credit and all the glory for it. We love you and we thank you for Jesus. Will you say amen with me? Hey, listen, amen. We love you guys. Thank you for being in worship with us today and have a great Sunday.